Hey everybody, this is Melissa from vmist.net and today we're going to talk about the advanced configuration of Veeam Availability Orchestrator version 3. Now what do I mean when I say advanced configuration? I mean you've installed VAO and you've gone through this initial configuration wizard. So this is the wizard that launches the first time you log into the UI and it's going to bring you through all these steps on the left here. You'll add information about your server, you'll choose additional administrators, you will have the option to deploy the VAO agent to your existing backup and replication servers. You can do that again later. You'll enter those credentials to push that agent. And then finally, you will connect to one VMware vCenter server. If you need to connect to additional VMware vCenter servers, we can do that from the configuration pane later. So now let's head over to my lab where we'll go through those advanced configuration options. Okay, so I have just logged into the VAO UI, and if I come here to this gear in the corner that says administration and click it, I will be brought to the brand new dashboard that came in version three. So this is kind of the quick view of your environment and how things are doing. Have to fix some data stores, but what else is new? I'll handle that later. And if we look on the left, this is everything we're gonna need to configure for VAO. Some things you absolutely need to configure to get started. Some are nice to have. Um, so we'll go through everything and talk through it now. So VAO server, this is one of the steps in the initial configuration wizard. As you could tell, I didn't put contact details or any of that stuff. I could come here and edit at any time. And we have this kind of pop-up video type thing right here that walks you through the configuration, which is a really nice to have. VAO agents. So this is how we connect to our backup and replication servers. I just wanna point out one thing here. This server right here is the embedded server that came with VAO. You don't actually have to install the agent there. Uh, it just comes with it. And this is one of my existing backup and replication servers. So why do we push an agent to all of our BNR servers? Simple, so it understands all of the BNR jobs, the backup jobs, replica jobs, the data labs that we already have configured. Really super easy to get started with because all we need to do is push that agent. Next is VMware vCenter servers. Um, you added one during initial configuration. I had a couple more. I had to add env my environment. Just click add, you're ready to go. And storage systems. Brand new in version three is storage integration and NetApp is the first storage integration partner. So what you would do here is click add, and we'll just click add so you can kind of see what all the interfaces look like. And we're gonna add it in NetApp world at the SVM level. So you just put in your DNS name or IP address, your credentials, you connect, and you're good to go. And then it will actually understand, VAO will understand all of your snap mirror relationships you already have configured. So the key thing to take away what we've done so far is always install the agent on all of your BNR servers. Make sure you have your jobs configuration, your backup jobs, your replica jobs, all that good stuff. And same thing with that, make sure you have your snap mirrors running. If you have all that done before you install VAO, you are almost ready to start creating orchestration plans. You actually, if you're using Veeam replicas, you're basically ready to go. The next thing I wanna talk about is a little more advanced and it's something called a recovery location. So let's talk about recovery locations. What's a recovery location? It's a logical grouping of the resources you want to recover to. You're always gonna see this original VM location that is out of the box. It's for a restore plan. And then we added a couple different ones here. So let's go through one of my storage recovery locations and take a closer look. We can see my compute. So site one recovery group site one, and this is what I have in it. These are powered by vSphere tags, which is probably the best and easiest way to categorize your stuff for VAO. So VAO can work with two different things, right? It can work with vSphere tags or theme one business view groups. You might not know this, but you can actually push vSphere tags with Veeam1. So you can use the intelligence of Veeam1 to do that grouping in business view and then push it to vCenter and use tags. That's what I recommend to just about everybody because tags are really useful in your environment for other reasons, right? We can configure our backup and our replication jobs based on vSphere tags. So when a new VM is added and tagged, like you added a VM to an application, it's automatically gonna be protected. I love vSphere tags. But anyway, uh, back to our recovery location. So this is my NetApp storage system, uh, network mapping. We actually have the ability to map networks in VAO, which is really handy, because as you can see, I actually have different networking uh, schemes in each of my data centers. 
And then re-IP rules. I'm using pretty much a, a flat VLAN everywhere, but if you had, if you needed to re-IP, so if I'm 10 to one in production and 10 to three in DR, I could just like map everything right here, super simple. So we need recovery locations for a couple things, for restore plans, if we're restoring VMs from backups, and for storage plans. When you actually go and create a restore plan, you're gonna pick your recovery location. When you do a storage plan, you don't need to do anything basically, you set up your recovery locations once and VAO is smart enough to know, okay, this is the way the snap mirror is working, here's my recovery location, we are good to go. So if you are using backups or NetApp snap mirrors, so that translates to a restore plan or a storage plan, you need to create these recovery locations before you can create a plan. Once you have this done, so you've configured your vCenters, your storage systems, and your recovery locations, you are literally ready to start making an orchestration plan and good to go. I have another video that you can find on my channel and it's basically creating and launching a storage orchestration plan. Again, everything is really simple to configure and everything is super wizardry and awesome lots of wizards to help you get going. So now I wanna go through the rest of the configuration screen and explain some of the really cool features that we actually have. So reporting, reporting in VIO is awesome. I'll do a deep dive video on all our reports, but there's four different reports and you can automatically have them sent to key stakeholders. So you put in an SMTP server, you can add recipients to subscribe to, which I haven't. Um, funny story, once I like put someone in here and did a bunch of VIO stuff and just kept bombing their inbox with readiness checks and reports and data lab tests and all that stuff. So you can have fun with people as you are setting up your DR plans, but it's really good uh, for key stakeholders, right? Application owner wants to know everything that happens to their plan, et cetera. You can see a couple of things here. Uh, I'm gonna talk about scopes in a second, but changes will be applied to the following scopes, admin scope, and if I wanted to change site scopes, which I will apply, uh, which I will explain when we get to this rules and scopes part, you could do that here. Report level detail. I love all details because it tells you everything VAO does, but if you want to be a little less verbose, we have three levels of reporting. Plan steps. Now this is part of the absolute magic of VAO. I have a ton of out of the box enterprise application verification steps. So you can see them all here with all the little symbols for their respective applications. So for example, verify SQL port and verify SQL database, really good for databases. We got web stuff, we have exchange, domain controllers, DNS, got a lot of stuff here. Now you can see a couple things with this little, um, I don't know, it looks like a command prompt or something. Those are all custom steps that I've created and added to VAO. So what is it? You can upload any PowerShell script you want to VAO, which means you can make VAO literally orchestrate anything you want it to. Let's use uh, my VAO demo test script as an example, because it's pretty cool. And we're gonna go and edit it so you can see some of the options that we have. So if I click edit here, I have a name, description, where the file is step parameters. So here's a couple of important things here. So fail back and undo failover action. Do we want to run it then? Yes or no. Test action. Do we skip or test it? Now this is really interesting, right? So for example, I think you saw I had a step in here for like DNS changes. If I'm running a data lab test, I might not want to change my production DNS, right? So I can skip that step during a test, but make sure it runs during an actual um, orchestration plan launch. Critical step, can, we can call a step critical or not and then decide what's going to happen if it fails in VAO. Timeout, retries, all that good stuff. This is super cool, execute location. So you can execute these scripts in a couple of different places. You can do it on your VAO server, inside the guest OS, which is super handy and super cool or on your Veeam backup server, which is another really interesting place. If you wanna you know, add some PowerShell to do some crazy BNR things, you totally could. And then this is a parameter that I am passing between my script and VAO. So we have the a whole list of parameters that we can pass back and forth between script and VAO. So all this does is when my script runs, I have this default value of current VM name. 
it will do whatever I'm asking it to on the current VM that is processing in VAO. So if I needed to make a bunch of changes or I just needed a verification script that, you know, outputted running services for whatever VM, I could do that all by passing these parameters. So I write one script, put in one of these parameters, and then I'm good to go and it will just do it based on the VM name, which is another thing that's just super handy to have. Update existing plans. Okay, so if I change things, do I wanna push it into my plans? I don't actually have any plans using this. I don't think, oh, here's one. It tells you what plans are affected. And then summary of what I've did. I didn't actually change anything, so we're just gonna cancel out here. But this is kind of the magic of VAO. When you create an orchestration plan in VAO, there's basically a couple of different buckets you can do things in. You can do it before plan execution, during plan execution and after. So what do I mean? That kind of plan execution area is when we're doing things to our VMs. We can have a script run alongside of that on our VMs, or we can have the script run before or after. Again, I like that um, example of DNS changes and application verification. So I could have a step at the very end saying, after the plan is fully executed, verify my application, and you're good to go pretty much. So those are custom steps in VIO. You can do all sorts of crazy things here. Couple settings, like this isn't a big deal, UI activity timeout, right? You might wanna log people out of VAO so people aren't leaving the king's, keys to the kingdom open when it comes to DR, but that ties into roles and scopes. Now this is super cool. I do almost everything as the admin scope just because that's how I set everything up, but we can create custom scopes in VAO. And this is our version of basically role-based access. So we create a scope, we map resources to it, and then we give the scope a role. So administrators, really simple, basically log in, do everything you want. Plan authors can come in and create plans and run plans and run tests. And when you create the scope, you're mapping resources to it, right? So I can map VM groups, which are just powered by VC or tags. I can map recovery locations. I can map plan steps, all that good stuff. So when someone who's a plan author or plan operator logs in, all they see is what they have access to. So I like to use this example right here, Krypton SOAR application team. I create a scope for an app team. They log in, all they see is their resources, and then they can either then as a plan author, they can create run plans and tests or as a plan operator. And the plan operator role is new in version three and super cool. Basically plan operator is come in and hit the big red button. They can launch plans and they can run data lab tests, but they can't actually edit the plans, right? So that's impo important distinction. Great to hand over to your ops team. So someone can call and say, hey, fail over my app. They click go, but that's all they're allowed to do. Data lab assignments. So we need to map the BNR data labs to VAO and we do it through here. Basically, we have our own construct of data labs inside of VAO. So what do I mean by that? We use the virtual lab that you configure in BNR. That's a configure once and forget it thing. And then we have lab groups that we create in VAO. And the lab groups are kind of like the application group in BNR, but we do it through VAO just because we wanna give people that single interface and let them do most things from here, right? And that's where you put your critical VMs like your AD, DNS, all that kind of good stuff, right? So you map your data labs into VAO. You do have to assign them. So once you push that agent, VAO will understand all the data labs and you just need to assign them to a scope so you can actually use them in VAO. Plan components. Now this is where things get crazy so you can build out your site scopes. And I, I don't mean crazy, I just mean it's so granular and it's so flexible, you can lock it down, how, down however you want to. So you can see changes will be applied to the following scope. Let's switch scopes and you know change a couple things around, why not? So as you can see, a bunch of stuff is not included. If I come to VM groups, these are all basically vSphere tags I have in my environment or data store. So when you see data store, that's a data store, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that's for use in our storage plans. And then all these others are tag categories and tag names. So I could come in here and say, okay, I'm gonna pick these three tags and then I'm going to include them and we're good. Now they're included in our site scope. We have to come and do the same thing with recovery location, so we can create them and map them here. Plan steps, this is great too. So if you get into that custom scripting stuff, you can say, okay, this is the Krypton SOAR application. 
Uh, I'm going to actually, I have to exclude everything first, right? So let's do it by exclusion. So everything is not included. Then I come back here and I say, okay, this is the Helium Run application. Uh, they need to be able to restore their VMs, of course, and run their application verification script. We're gonna click the include button and then come down here. Oh, they have SQL and a web server. So let's include those two, pretty simple. Credentials, these are credentials that VAO needs to do stuff to your VM. So some of these verification steps, you do need um, Windows credentials, right? Or credentials, and here's some for backup repositories, all that kind of stuff. You would put them in here. And again, you can include, inc include, exclude from your site scopes. And template jobs, bad VAO person, I don't have any configured right now, but a template job is basically, you just create a template job in BNR to protect your data after failover. When you create a plan, there's a setting to protect your data basically for the restore and replica plans. So once your VMs are in their new production environment, which is your DR site or whatever have you, uh, you can actually protect them with BNR and just have a job that runs, you know, whatever your RPO is. Licensing, boring but important, we're licensed. And here's my pop-up video friend again. I turned off some of them so you don't see them anywhere. In the unlikely event that you do have an issue with VAO, it is super easy to export your logs and send them to our awesome support team. And then about here is kind of all of your server information here. And that's it, that's all there is to it. You are, have just run through the full configuration of VAO and you are ready to get up and running with anything. One more time, the quick and dirty things you need to do. You need the VAO agents installed on BNR. VAO understands your existing jobs. You need all of the VMware servers for your um, source and destination environment, depending how you're architected. There's lots of different topologies you can deploy in, right? If you're using NetApp storage systems, you need to have those connected to VAO and your SnapMirror jobs configured and running. You need a recovery location for a restore plan and a storage plan. Uh, there is a way this can tie into replicas, but I will save that for my replica deep dive. And then if you wanna do your data lab testing, you need to come in and map your data labs from BNR. Uh, that's not absolutely mandatory to get up and running with a plan, right? But of course, one of the hallmark features of VAO is the ability to test our plans really simply and easily. So we really want to configure those. But if you are looking for absolutely quick and dirty, let me just get a plan created and see if I can run it without testing. It's right here. It's the VAO agents, the vCenter, the storage systems, and the recovery locations. So when you're done here, you just click exit administration and you're back at your VAO dashboard. Uh, let's just end on this dashboard, right? And point out what we can see here. Plan execution, how I'm looking. I have two plans that successfully ran, awesome. Two readiness checks I need to take a look at, not so awesome. And then out of all of my plans, I have one that's passed a test, one that has warnings and a bunch I haven't tested. So I need to do a little bit better there but we'll come back and do a couple more videos and show you how to do some of this stuff.